How you doing today? I'm great. How about you? I'm great, man. Uh, all right, let's start off a little bit about how you grew up and where you're from. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Um, I grew up in um, a family of five, my mom, my dad, my twin brother, and my oldest brother. Um, and I've always had an interest in um, love for art. So growing up, I've always drawn, even before I could write. Um, I went to school for academic and I went to a performance art school where my major was, where my focus was illustration, drawing, painting. And I've always known I wanted to do that. So from there, you know, I used to do it for a hobby. I used to do it for extra cash, doing portraits, you know, uh, for people painting on jeans, whatever. Um, I've always had that entrepreneur spirit where I made money from my talent. All right. So, you know, you say you grew up, you know, with what, five siblings or was it? Three siblings and my mom and my dad. I mean, two siblings. I'm sorry. I grew up with two siblings and my mom and my dad. I had a twin brother and an older brother that's two years older than us. So what was it like, you know, having a twin? Um, we were fraternal. So really it was like having another brother. Um, because they normally did that thing and I did mine. My, my focus has always been tunnel vision on creating art. And, you know, so it was more like for me just having another brother. We all were pretty close. Um, but uh, my interest was most definitely different than theirs. I already knew I wanted to be creative and do something in the field versus my brothers who um, were interested in video games and sports or you know um anything other than the art my twin brother he dabbled in art some but his focus was pro primarily like um, video games and stuff now for you know a lot of creatives you know a lot of us we end up working in multiple mediums mm -hmm. you know how did you get into the photography aspect that you came from drawing background you know um i went to school in the maryland institute college of art baltimore maryland after graduating, I decided to go there. And my main objective was to learn everything from painting to drawing, to sculpture, to design, whatever. So basically I could do what I love and make a living. So I really didn't care um, as far as um, what the field was, what the media was, um, I knew it was gonna be art. And I was introduced to photography in the third grade at the Performing Arts School in Mississippi. So I just left everything open. Um, honestly, I thought I'd be doing painting and illustration uh, for a time. But when I got to Atlanta, um, because of my illustrative background in illustration, it separated me from other photographers. And um, it was an, an outlet to still create art and do illusionism, but not take 40 hours to do a painting. Hmm. You know, so, you know, when I was coming up, you know, I was a drawer as well. You know, mm -hmm. and by the time it was time for me to go to college and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. you know, my art teacher in, in senior year, she she's the one who introduced me to graphic design. Mm -hmm. So before that, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I liked, I was a big fan of Master P and No Limit. Mm -hmm. So their album art, I was always into that. And once she just, you know, described to me what that was, I pursued that in particular. Now, in reference to photography and things of that nature, I kind of picked that up along the way because we had to take, you know, the classes for it. Mm -hmm. you know? So prior to that, I didn't have any, you know, I didn't want to do photography at all, you know, mm -hmm. but once we got into it, you know, I kind of enjoyed it. So. You know, you said you went to a college of arts mm -hmm. in particular, so the so the primary focus was art. Right, it was an art school, and um, they had different any form of art, from fashion design to fabrics to video to photography to fine art to commercial art. They covered the whole spectrum, even down to art education. Um, and you know, you mentioned Master P earlier too. You know, music is um, was a big part of me, my life growing up. So, you know, I used to paint, draw the pictures, favorite groups, wh whomever. And I remember looking at CD packaging and one day wanting to create that myself. So it's ironic for me to be doing that and working with greats like Missy Elliott on their projects 
Um, I remember years ago when I worked on work with Faith Evans, you know, 96, I graduated and how big she was then to think that I would be working with her or like currently I'm working with on Fantasia's new album that drops at the end of August. So um, it's a little surreal to kind of work with these people that inspired you visually to be growing up with and to realize how important music was to what what I'm doing now. And see, you know, the thing with that, you know, it's like I didn't realize that you could go to college for a specific, mm -hmm. just for art. And if I did, I probably would have went that route as well. Mm -hmm. Now, um, one thing that you did uh, mention, you know, working with a lot of bigger name people, where did you get your big break? What, what project was that? You know, I think my first big project, um, one of them, was Tantra, which was an energy drink for Ludacris. Um, working the red carpet, um, just moved to Atlanta, and I met the chair of his foundation and showed her my work. And she actually asked me to shoot the promo shots for Ludacris. So I was extremely happy for that. Um, I was still at the time working a full-time job doing graphic design for a, a corporate company called Scientific Games. They design lottery tickets and my account was with the Illinois Lottery. So I took my background as far as drawing and did the graphics and graphic design for the lottery tickets. And, and part-time I was shooting as well. So I met this young lady by the name of Rachel Vassell and I did her family portraits. And at that time she asked me um, about working on her book project. And I'm like, okay, sure, I'd love to do it. Um, long story short, she hit me back. She was like, I got a publishing deal. Um, they want to include some celebrities to market it accordingly and to get more publicity for it. So I'm just like, great. Next thing I know, we're in LA and we're shooting the likes of Tracy um, Edmonds and Lisa Ray and Melinda Williams and um, Tisha Campbell, all these women. The book was called Daughters of Men. So um, it opened up doors for me too. Um, and because I was so proficient and fast in photography, that was a bonus to um, me getting the shots that they needed and them, me working with them long term. So from that project alone, a lot of those women ended up being my clients. And that's kind of been the reputation that I've built as far as being creative, fast, um, on set. A lot of them don't want to be um, on sets all day. So I shoot fast. I kind of plan out my vision before and I execute what I'm, what I'm there to accomplish. So um, that's kind of the, that project kind of um, made me realize I wanted to do my own coffee table book. And that's where the alter egos were birthed. Um, and I decided to do that using some of those clientele and reaching out to other people about being on the project and the project just blew up overnight. So I knew the success of the project because I did an art opening and everybody came out there from Janelle Monet to T.I. and Tiny, CeeLo. So at the same time, um, I had been working with Nini from The Housewives. And I propositioned her to do the same thing on the show. So most people don't know that the alter ego I was doing before the housewives, but that just opened up the floodgates for international exposure. And from there, I worked with magazines like Ebony and Essence, shot covers, um, major record labels, and branded myself as kind of like the alter ego king. Okay, now I'm glad you went into that because that <laughs> in particular is is what I know you for. And and what year was that where all of that kind of picked up? Um, I would say it was roughly around 2008, around there where I did the Housewives Alter Ego. Okay. Now I have a funny story. Um, I created around that time, maybe around 2010. Mm -hmm. I saw your work. And you were talking about inspiring people, and you actually inspired one of my alter ego shoots that I did mm -hmm. shortly after. And I didn't realize that until maybe a few weeks ago. So wow. I was talking to Lena, and she was like, "Okay, I got a guy, you know, Derek Blanks, and he's a photographer. He shoots all kinds of celebrities." 
I'm like, okay, so when I once when I went and looked up the website and I saw some of the work, I recognized it from it's been almost ten, you know, ten mm-hmm. years at this point, and I'm like, that's him. You know, I knew the work, I mm-hmm. just didn't remember the name, and it's like when I did that, it was with you in mind in particular. You know, okay. So I just thought that was kind of weird. It was like, you know, you know, a lot of times artists we see each other's work and we, and we get inspired by each other. And every time I did it, it was like, this is the guy who does the alter ego shoots. I got that idea from him. That's awesome. So I just thought that was kind of crazy. Man. Well, it's, 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 it's weird. <laughs> it really is. That's awesome. Man. It even happens to me. Like I'm inspired by things on a daily, you know, and um, um, not even aware of it, honestly. So, you know, there's an artist thing where we take and we borrow and we kind of make it our own, but that's great. I appreciate it. Now, what was the, you know, so you're technically like, in reference to all the alter ego shoots, I've only known of you being the guy. Yeah, I mean, you know, the alter ego for me came from watching Top Model, and I had seen the episode, and I was like, hey, that's cool, but it's missing something. It's nowhere in the action between the two. I was like, that's where to sell it or break it to me with my background in illustration and making it surreal. You know, I thought it would be dope to have the interaction component. And, you know, like you said, you were inspired. Um, I realized at that moment or late, years later that, you know, I had done alter egos when I was in college, but I called it a double exposure where um, we actually went in a dark room, shot and placed it together without computers. So it's always kind of been in the back of my mind, but it was kind of brought to the four four front when I did um, the Housewives of Atlanta. So um, I think really that really sealed the deal as far as me being an alter ego. And, I, you know, there's nothing new, but um, for sure, I kind of like made it mine and did multiple and did stories from it and kind of used the celebrity aspect to publicize it um, and my background in illustration to add to the illusion. Now, what would you say would be, uh, do you have a favorite so far? Um, one of my favorites would probably be Brandy Norwoods and the reason being because it's a whole story. It's about five or six images that kind of work into one and it kind of deals with the demons within ourselves. So it's a dark side of her and represented by all black and then a white side, um, represented by all white, but it's more a fashion spread, which kind of plays with the, the, um, the brands and the culture as well and pushing myself to kind of tell a story and what multiple images. Um, I would say probably hers was one of my favorite for sure. Um, another one of my favorites would be Rockman Dunbar, um, best known from Soul Food. Um, he's robbing himself in the back of a taxi cab. Um, and actors are just fun because they get, get it and they, he killed it within the, probably the first five minutes of the shoot. So um, I have so many favorite ones, but yeah, for sure, and probably those two. So when we're talking creating these concepts, are you, you know, of course you're speaking with them, but are mm-hmm. you basically developing everything for them or are you guys bouncing ideas off each other or what? Normally what happens is um, I interview them and they come up with a concept that's kind of cliched or expected. And my my goal is to really pick their brain and find out. So I'm, my first question normally is, what would you be doing if you weren't an entertainer, if you weren't an artist? And then I expound or, or I elaborate on that. You know, one of my other favorite ones I kind of completely forgot about would be like um, Taraji P. Henson, which was before his time because I kind of made it, um, played up her cookie aspect. And this was eight years before Empire existed. So uh, to me, it's always kind of cool to think about what they would be doing or find a different um, avenue that they may not do. You know, um, I just recently started, not recently, but in the past five years, I've been directing a lot of music videos. And um, what I'm offering right now is something for artists as far as a one-stop shop kind of taking all my talents as far as the graphic design, the photography, the video, and um, offering a 
um, a solid package that's not all over the place. Currently, um, like I mentioned, I'm working on Fantasia's project, which is her first independent project, which is major to me because she's a, she's a major artist. So to not be on a major label anymore and to come back out and your stuff look just as good, if not better, you know, that's, that's an honor for me, for her to get the feedback and acceptance from her fans and her peers and her ex-labels. So currently I'm offering packages as far as for independent and major offices, where it's all um, under one roof. Um, Long-term goals is to do motion films um, for sure, but I'm just working, um, got new artists, Missy Elliott that I'm working with too on her upcoming project. So I'm ecstatic, I'm ecstatic to just be working with like icons that have been notarized, I mean, known for their bodies of work um, and me being a resource um, for them to me is major. So right. now, you know, people like Missy, people like Nicki Minaj, mm -hmm. you know, those are people who are known to have very, very, I guess, uh, they're different. They stand out. Their imagery has always been different. Their clothing, things of that mm -hmm. nature. How did you approach, you know, and uh, particularly um, um, Missy Elliott now, being that it's so much history, so much time has passed, and she's coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a very big project. Yes, I would agree. And you know, the valid, the um, the, the valid, the validation of Missy in general to even come to me is humbling. Um, knowing her I, her history and how visual and how ahead of her time. So, um, you know, with Missy, fortunately, someone told her about me. So that relationship happened from that. But it's like a seal of a stamp of approval for her to work with me multiple times and to try to get her brain how complex it is and how visually ahead she is even to this day um, is a challenge that I'm always looking forward to and honored to be a part of. So in saying that, you know, um, a lot of times I just try to have to think out of the box and make sure she's included in the collaboration and pitch ideas and learn from people like Missy too, you know, that, that's been in the game for a minute visually. And um learn how her brain works. Um, a lot of times just being around creatives from my assistants is very inspiring and the feedback or the feel that you get from that um, is indescribable. So it's just surreal to be talking on the phone or conversing with talent like that and thinking up conceptual stuff that's gonna be um, seen by millions. Now, with all of the technology today, mm -hmm. and um, it seems like every industry that's you know popular that seems to be working for people, it always gets saturated. Mm -hmm. And now, pretty much everybody's a photographer, mm -hmm. everybody's a graphic designer. I've seen DJs go from DJing, they done switched over. <laughs> it's, you know, pretty much everybody you can think of are now behind mm -hmm. the camera. Um, so, what's, what's your take on that being in this? For one, being a creative and being in a city like Atlanta where everybody seems to be doing the same thing. You know what? I kind of feel like it's a little humbling too, um, honestly, because honestly, I think whatever you do, if your intent is great and honest and pure, you're going to prosper from it. Um, so I'm not really worried about other photographers that's coming on the scene if they're just doing it just because it's hot right now. Um but I think it's great if you're a young artist or photographer and to be inspiring to other people to see me do what I love and now it's full. Like you turn on Instagram, you see mo countless models, countless makeup artists, countless photographers. It's humbling. And the one thing that I learned from just working with assistants and interns is that you got to have more than just to want it. You got to have the drive. You have to have the dedication to do it. Um, you know, when I started, um, 
there's been so much competition as far as what's going on. And when I started, we wanted it. You know, now millennials, they have all the opportunity in front of them. So at that point, the millennials, I t tell my assistants this all the time, you got to have to do more than that. You have to go out, out of your way. You have to have the drive, the dedication. You just can't have the skill. So that's one thing that I would suggest people do for sure. And the other thing is not to worry about competition because they, most of them won't have the drive and dedication and work ethic that, you know, others have. Okay, so lastly, um, you know, when this is all said and done, you know, what would you like to accomplish and how would you like to be remembered? You know what? Honestly, the last thing that I would like to be thought of um, when it's all said and done is I want my work to live on longer than me for generations. I want to be this generation's Gordon Parks. Um, I would love for my son and my great grandkids to be in their house and have one of my photos be in their home as art. Um, I would just like for my name to live on for generations. Okay. Now, how can people find you, those who don't know, social media, website, things of that nature? You can find me on Instagram, Mr. D Blanks. Um, my website is dblanks.com. Facebook, I have three pages. I believe Derek Blanks, Derek Blanks Workshop, and Derek Blanks Photography. Um, so look on the web. You can find me, Google me, come check me out. And a myth that most people think is I only do celebrities. I shoot everybody. All right. Well, appreciate you. And uh, much success to you. Keep moving forward. And, and thanks again for you know speaking with us today. Appreciate it, man.